This is a section for Algebra 1b on graphing quadratics. First of all, when we have an equation in this form, we know it's a quadratic because of the x squared. And we'll put specific numbers in here. Let's say we have an equation like y equals x squared plus 6x plus 11. And we want to graph this one. We have a couple of options. We can go through a six-step process. Step one, I'll take a equal to 1, b equal to 6, and c equal to 11. Just identifying the a, b, and c values. Number two, we're always going to use the formula opposite of b over 2a. So that's negative 6 over 2 times 1, which comes out to negative 3. What that means for us then is we can make a chart. Negative 3 goes right in the middle of that chart. We'll pick a few numbers to the left, a few numbers to the right, and we have an idea of what our chart's going to look like. Now the fourth step is the one that could take the, the longest time. We're going to take these x values and plug them back into the equation. For example, negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 plus 11. Anywhere I see an x in the original equation, I'm going to substitute my x value of negative 1 in for that. So evaluating this, that comes out to a value of 6. Then I can plug negative 2 in for the x value. Evaluate this one, comes out to 3. Then plug negative 3 in, negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 11. That comes out to 2. Plug negative 4 in, plug negative 5 in, we get those points. So this is my fourth step I'm evaluating. The fifth step is to plot those points. Negative 1 comma 6, negative 2 comma 3, negative 3 comma 2, negative 4 comma 3 again, and negative 5 comma 6. Sixth and final step is to draw in the smooth curve that connects all those points together. So here's how we can graph that. Now some other things you're going to be asked in regards to this section on graphing quadratics is what is the equation for the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is the line that splits it directly in half. And it's always going to be a vertical line because these graphs run either up or down. We're not going to say split it like this because then what you have above that line is not the same thing that we have below it. So our axis of symmetry is going to look something kind of like this. And it's always going to go through the vertex. So since our vertex was x or negative 3 comma 2, that means that our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. That's the vertical line that goes through our vertex. This 11 that we have at the end is going to always be our y-intercept. 0 comma 11 is where this graph would eventually cross the y-axis. Now another method we have in graphing these quadratics is if it is in this vertex form. For example, We've got the equation written like this. It's not all multiplied out. I don't have a, b, and c values. But because it's factored like this, what I know immediately is that the vertex is 3, 4, the opposite of that number and whatever that number is. So if I wanted to graph that, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, I've got it. My a value is 1, so I know it goes up. The axis of symmetry is x equals 3. So at x equals 3, we're going to have the same thing on the left and the right. Because it's going up, I can use my pattern, get a few points. It's going to be the same thing on the other side, and get a really quick sketch of this one. I don't have graph paper, so I'm not being terribly precise, but that's the idea for a problem like this. Now, sometimes we're going to have equations which aren't in that form, but it might be advantageous to get them into that form. So we will split up a little bit the plus 3 at the end and really focus on that part first. The process of completing the square assumes that we have an a value of 1. If it's not, we would divide to make it equal to 1. But we're going to take this b value, negative 8, divide it by 2, and then square that number. Negative 4 squared is 16. So we add 16 to the left side, and then we subtract 16. To keep it equivalent, if we add and subtract the same number, it's OK. Going down further, what I have inside the orange parentheses would factor as x minus 4 quantity squared. Add those numbers together that are outside the parentheses, 
And here is our equation. Going from the standard form now into this vertex form, I know that the vertex is 4 comma negative 13. I didn't have to use the opposite of b over 2a, and I could get directly to the vertex. I know this graph is going up because a is 1, so I could go through the rest of the graphing process.